At the United Nations on Monday, a scene not unlike a heavyweight boxing match in Las Vegas played out. The rich and famous gathered ringside to watch a long-anticipated slugfest rematch between two titans that will most certainly have yet another rematch and could very well have been fixed. You can see how Leonard's confidence has grown. Now the ball out, and he caught him with the left. And he's got Duran openly, not just furious, but puzzled. It wasn't a boxing ring, of course, but the United Nations, where 160 world leaders filled the General Assembly Hall ostensibly to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the organization whose charter, ratified in October of 1945, is to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. So how to mark the 70th anniversary of a global organization dedicated to peace? By preparing for war, stupid! Take it away, Peace Prize! The United States is prepared to work with any nation including Russia and Iran, to resolve the conflict. But we must recognize that there cannot be, after so much bloodshed, so much carnage, a return to the pre-war status quo. That's the thing about war, isn't it? No matter who lives, who dies, and who gets to control the oil pipeline and control the resources, the certainty is that there is not going to be a return to the status quo. As the overwhelming stream of refugees fleeing Syria knows all too well, there simply just isn't there, there anymore. Now, if President Obama sounded a little testy during his UN remarks, it's because he is learning the hard way that you just don't play chess with the Russians. Putin came to the UN for the first time in a decade, and he wasted no time getting to the point Queen's Gambit go. We think it is an enormous mistake to refuse to cooperate with the Syrian government and its armed forces, who are valiantly fighting terrorism face to face. We should finally acknowledge that no one but President Assad's armed forces and Kurd militia are truly fighting the Islamic State and other terrorist organizations in Syria. As Juan Cole, writing on his website Informed Comment, points out, quote, Russia's Vladimir Putin has surprised Washington by volunteering to get militarily involved in Syria and by arguing that only by enlisting the Ba'ath regime of Bashar al-Assad can Daesh be defeated. Obama is defensive because A, his own plans for confronting Daesh have largely failed, and B, because Putin's plans for doing so are concrete and involve trying to prop up dictator Bashar al-Assad. So regime change is, for the moment, Obama's non-negotiable. And destroying the so-called Islamic State, let's just call them Daesh, is Putin's non-negotiable, or at least that's how they played it out for the UN Showcase Showdown. It took an undercard event, President Hassan Roshani from Iran, providing further context by reminding us that it was the invasion and occupation of Iraq by US forces that created the space for Daesh to rise to power in the first place. Oh, right. <laughs> We must not forget that the roots of today's destruction can be found in the occupation, invasion and military intervention of yesterday. If we did not have the U.S. military invasion of Afghanistan and Iraq, the terrorists would not have an excuse for the justification of their crimes. But Obama made it clear that the United States does not play by the same rules as anyone else. The flashpoint in Ukraine also figured large in the dueling speeches. President Obama condemned Russia for flagrantly violating Ukraine's sovereignty. Obama somehow kept a straight face as he dropped this bomb. If that happens without consequence in Ukraine, it could happen to any nation gathered here today. And at that point, the Iraqi elephant in the room was so large that everyone needed a drink. I want to propose a toast to all of our nations, to the United Nations, to the people that we represent and to whom we have responsibilities towards. Amid the inevitable trials and setbacks, may we never relax in our pursuit of progress and may we never abandon the pursuit of peace. And who are the people that the UN has responsibilities towards again, this 70-year-old global organization dedicated to peace? David Swanson, of the group World Beyond War describes the UN this way, quote, this institution was set up 70 years ago to keep nations rather than a global body in charge and to keep the victors of World War II in a permanent position of dominating the rest of the globe. The UN legalized, quote, defensive wars and it authorizes wars for any reason whatsoever. 
70 years of waging war to secure the peace? In the immortal words of the boxer, Roberto Duran, no mas, no mas. Acronym TV is individually produced and independently supported with donations from people just like you at acronymtv.com slash donate. And additional underwriting support is provided by Occupy.com, a news and media channel amplifying the voices of the global 99%. Find out more at Occupy.com and tell them that Dennis sent you.